Tesla unveiled its long awaited robo taxi last week, even though fans of the electric vehicle maker will have to wait until at least 2026 before they're available. Here to break down that robo, what robo taxis are and what this means for the future of cars are the legal professionals from Ashton and Price. Joining me now, we have attorney of Ashton and Price, Craig Ashton himself. Hello, Craig. Morning. Okay, so Tesla's known for being forward thinking with their vehicles. Let's talk about their recent reveal of the robo taxi unveiling. What features are included here, Craig? So I know a bit about this because I've had a Tesla now mm -hmm. since like 2016. And so the self-driving issue is for the robo-taxi that it is proposed that you'll be able to buy a car for about 30000 bucks. Mm -hmm. You buy it, you go to work, or, or you maybe go to sleep, and then your car's on the street, and then Tesla takes over. Mm -hmm. Somebody with a Tesla app basically summons your vehicle, and you can basically share the profits with Tesla and pay for your car wow. because it's a taxi at night. Wow. And so it'll be self-driving. The idea is whether or not that will work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So how is autonomous driving legally defined? So basically there's di different levels. So there's basically five. So okay. the first one, think about level one is cruise control. So mm -hmm. we all know about that or basically uh, assisted braking. Right. So then at level two is this new, which Tesla has, they're only at level two right now. It's basically just driver assist. So you've got uh, in-lane steering, you've yeah. got basically speed control, you'll stay a certain distance behind a, mm. behind a car. Level three is basically a little bit more where you can exit the freeway. Level four is what Waymo does, which mm -hmm. is basically Google. And they've got LiDAR, radar, and you may have seen those in San Francisco. They're doing 100,000 rides a week wow. that are paid with nobody in the car. Yeah. And that essentially is level four, which means supervised. So mm -hmm. there's no human driver, but if there's a problem, there's human oversight where they can stop the vehicle. Yeah. And it's also geofencing where it keeps it within a certain location. Okay, so you talked about the legalities of it. How is the government's role involved in all of this? Yeah, so the interesting thing in California, because we're kind of the leader, especially in San Francisco, if you go there, you'll see these Waymos, and I've seen them kind of progress mm -hmm. where First they had a driver that wasn't doing anything and now they have nobody yeah. driving the vehicle. They'll stop the pulling the traffic. So the DMV makes sure that the cars are safe from a technological perspective. Mm -hmm. The PUC is the one that allows them to charge and so that's been going on in San Francisco for now a couple years. So ultimately the DMV and then the PUC and then the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration will make sure that these cars are safe. That's the problem with Tesla because they have camera only Mm -hmm. You see these, the Waymo cars, they have LiDAR, radar, et cetera, plus camera and artificial intelligence. So the idea is that if it gets on the road and all these people have these driverless taxis, then there's going to be some issues regarding liability. Uh, are, is the owner of the car, is Tesla responsible, yes. especially if people are getting hurt? And companies that already have robo -tax taxis, you mentioned Waymo? So Waymo uh -huh. is if Waymo's Google, so okay. it, Alphabet. And so you'll see those, they're doing it in Phoenix, they're doing it in San Francisco right now. San mm -hmm. Francisco's leading the way, Northern California. And then Cruz, which is GM, but if you remember, they had that accident uh, in October of 2023 where they ran over a pedestrian in a cruise car, and oh, then God. the car didn't have a driver, so it went to go to pull to the side and drag the pedestrian under the car oh, for 20 feet. God. So at that point, they didn't share information with the DMV. The DMV said, hey, you're not cooperating with the investigation, and terminated their permit in California. And who gets charged for that? So in that case, the, the cause of action was against Cruz because mm -hmm. it's Cruz's car, Cruz's technology, there's no driver. Mm -hmm. And what is there, what's the federal fine for that? Oh, that one was 1.5 million. Wow. Yeah, 1.5 million, plus they lost their permit, which is even more valuable to a company like General Motors is trying to mm -hmm. do driverless taxis. The first company that figures this out is gonna change the dynamic of the way we interact. Because think of it, you can go out and have a few beers and you have to drive, mm -hmm. the car will drive you home, there's no, no more DUI. Uh, all of the safety issues, cars will be more safe. It'll put guys like me, who's a personal injury attorney, uh, out of business because there'll be no car accidents. Yeah. <laughs> but it's so much better for society. Yeah. What are some of the legal issues of self-driving cars? So the legal issues are going to be, all right, so you go to bed, Tesla takes over your car, and the car gets in an accident. Who's responsible? Mm -hmm. Is it Tesla? Is it you because you own the car? It's going to be insurance. There's going to be liability. Those things all have to be hashed out. My, my supposition will be that whoever's operating the car, mm -hmm. if it's Tesla takes over or Waymo, what have you, then they're gonna be responsible while they're operating the vehicle. And then when you're driving it yourself, and at that point, the liability will rest with you and you'll have to have your own insurance. Oh my goodness. Okay, do you think, how, like, how is this all gonna play out? Do you think people are still really fearful about hearing what all of this is? Or do you think it'll eventually be something we're all using? I think we probably will be. I don't know how quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, Elon Musk, who I bought into years ago, said, hey, buy the full self-driving, I'll download. I did that. Mm -hmm. Never got it. Mm -hmm. Seven years, I think I paid $15,000 for the technology. Never existed. Yeah. So there's a lot of exaggeration, especially when it comes out of Elon Musk's mouth. And the idea is somebody's going to crack this particular uh, scientific issue mm -hmm. and allow us to have driverless uh, cars, which is going to be awesome. 
There's going to be no more DUI. Mm -hmm. There's going to be basically accidents are going to be cut down dramatically. Everybody will have insurance that will allow us to get around. But in terms of cracking that technological uh, basically problem, I think it's probably years away. Yeah. And Waymo is almost there, though. I mean, if you, if you go to San Francisco, take a look. It's the weirdest thing. They look in a car and have no driver. Uh, I mean, and, so it, and it's going on right now. Yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah. They're, and they're doing it, 100,000 rides a week. Oh, my gosh. And so they've, they've pretty much cracked it because they're one of the wealthiest companies in the world, mm -hmm. Google, Alphabet. And they've got the technology where Elon Musk tends to be more of a kind of a promoter, mm -hmm. uh, which I've noticed that he exaggerates a lot. Yeah. And so in this case, we'll see. All right, we'll see. Just like Craig said. Craig, thanks for informing us every time you come on. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm, I'm a pleasure to be here. I'm uh, of course. All right, to our viewers, for local legal advice, visit ashtonandprice.com.